trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted the charts from across the pond, the DAX and the FTSE. As you can see, we've had a nice rally. It looks like the end of the world has been put off, folks. They've opened the casinos in Macau, and uh, they're saying there are no charts yet. Well, I'm going to repost them again. Let's see what happens here. Maybe it'll work this time. Let's get these up here. Here is the German DAX. You can see the rally that we've had last night. And right after that, we're going to take a look at the uh, footsie. Put it there. We go. Get it up here. All righty. Now let's move on to the next one. This is uh, very interesting, folks, because we've been talking about this for quite a while here, for a few days anyway. But here is a very beautiful color rendition of what the euro versus the U.S. dollar is doing. And we are down uh, at some very, very key support in here. This chart was done by one of our good friends across the pond uh, that trades the uh, euro uh, quite a bit. This is a daily chart. You can see the ABCD pattern there uh, and the beautiful colors of the things. But we're going to we're in major support here at 107.90. My, my guess is we'll get a little bit of a rally. Uh, I don't know how much of a rally because the long term weekly picture on this could really, really get negative uh, if it breaks through that uh, that 107 level. And remember, we've looked at the euro, uh, you know, it was at 84 at one time when my grandson was born in, oh, uh, what was it, 2001. I believe the euro was at uh, 84 and it went to 160. So, um, you know, that, I remember 160 because Sarah and I were on our honeymoon in Italy and I had to pay $9.50 for a Diet Coke with ice at the hotel we were staying at. I almost switched, but I sprung for it. Why, I don't know. Boys and girls, we had a couple really interesting things going on last night, and one of them was it's something that uh, we had been waiting for for quite some time. Let's get it up here. Hold on here one second. Where are we, boys and girls? Hold on here. There. Is this it? Yep, here it is right here. I don't know if this is right or not, but I sent this out last night when we were uh, – when we were making the new highs up there at uh, 16, uh, 13, and uh, we took out the highs that we made in January. That was a perfect A, B, C, D. Now, we backed off uh, about 8 bucks uh, from that level. If you did that trade, you certainly want to put your stop at break even and, uh, you know, let it rip, see if it's going to work or not. I don't know. But no one else knows either. We got a couple of really neat things today, folks. We have uh, Bill Chapman from Trend Reaction is going to be on. He was listening to Tom's show yesterday, and he says he has some really interesting uh, tidbits or facts to show it. And he showed me the charts, and I know it's going to be very, very interesting. It's from uh, Jim Sloman and Wells Wilder stuff from many years ago, but it's related to uh, uh, some of these the 72 and 500 day, 72 week or 500 day cycle. And he's going to be chatting with us at the uh, first break here in about 10 minutes and then at the halftime break we've got the wolf man the wolf trader shane smolian will be on and we'll be talking about a whole lot of things that he's got on his uh, plate here this morning so we got a lot of good things you know to really be looking at okay now let's take a look here at one other market that looks uh, very very interesting and of course that's the that natural gas folks if you remember that natural gas uh, oh, I want to do this one here because this uh, this bond chart is uh, hold is very important. Let's do bonds first. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's get the bonds up here. There we go. You'll see the bonds, and uh, the bonds are starting to look weak, folks. So just. Uh, I don't know. They should have had a lot more movement to the upside. But all this news that's going on, you know, it's really hard to to try to if you if you're not a technician, it's really hard to try to simulate what the news is doing. Now we've got this uh, virus supposedly under, under control, and you think the stock market would be screaming to the upside? Well, it's up a little bit, but it certainly isn't gonna. It isn't screaming. So let's remember that as uh, the news follows the trend, as they say in the trade. Okay, here is what I wanted to chat with you about, folks. Here was the situation we had in Tesla yesterday. Uh, 
Tom had shorted this up here at 900. He covered a lot of it at 720 down there at that 78% level there on the 13th. Uh, he went short again at the uh, 60 uh, at the at the excuse me at the 61% level and. Uh, he 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 reversed his position yesterday, folks. Or it was late last night, I think, or sometime this morning. Uh, he started buying it once it went above 865, and and he just got out of it just now. So uh, I'll tell you, you got to have really chutzpah to do that. But by golly, you know when these things. Uh, fail at the 618, they're most probably going to go to the 786. Those are just simple probabilities. So we'll see how they uh, end up, but that's what we're watching here. We've got, some, well, we'll move on to the other thing. Uh, let's get on. I've got a trader's manual that I'm doing with um, John Jameson, and it shows some of these statistics, folks. I mean, it just blows your mind. Uh, about how important the opening price is. I mean, it's just it's just absolutely unbelievable. And we'll be sharing that with uh, the folks that uh, take a look at it. Let's move over to uh, one of the questions that we had, and that's about the natural gas. Folks, we've, the natural gas has moved, uh, you know, 20 handles higher than uh, what we were looking at down there at that 175. This looks like something really major. So I would I would hang in there and see if it's going to uh, if it's going to you know to make that. Uh, make that move. I, I, I really don't know, but no one else does either. So let's uh, let's remind ourselves of that. Now, getting getting back to the uh, the dollar index and the euro, I wanted to get this chart up. It's really nice. This shows the dollar index, which is, of course, the opposite, uh, the exact opposite. There's the ABCD to the downside. Now you, you see where we've taken out the highs of points three and five back here. And we better get going here in this net in the dollar index. Otherwise, this euro is going to turn. So watch it closely. If you look at point D, look at the bottom of the chart at point D where that uh, those uh, uh, Andrews uh, pitchforks. And I, I met Alan Andrews. John Hill went and I went to his house in uh, Florida. Uh, oh my God! This was back a thousand years ago, maybe two thousand years ago, and it was a quite beautiful little house, very very quaint, very, you know. And it uh, he he didn't trade; all he did was uh, research the markets, and which was okay. Hey, you know the guy that did the book, uh, Nissan, uh, Steve Nissan, that did the the candlesticks. He's never traded. Uh, when Tom Bugard and I took him to dinner in New York, uh, we almost fell over when he told us he never traded. He said he's just he says he has an interest in the in the pictures, but no interest in trading. So well, that's okay. Anyway, watch this. This is a big ABCD here, taking out the highs of three and five without screaming. Ooh, it's a big, 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 big caution sign, in my opinion, just by reading the chart. So we'll see if that's going to happen or not. We're going to have a break coming up pretty pretty soon here, and we'll move on to the next one that we're looking at, and we'll see what the rest of the markets are doing, and we'll be looking at these things pretty good here. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. We've got uh, Bill Chapman of the Trend Reaction on the line. Bill, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Good morning, Larry. How are you today? I'm good. Listen, uh, folks, uh, Bill was listening to Tom Hugard yesterday, and he had some information regarding that 500-day uh, and 72 weeks. And I, I sent this on to uh, uh, Tom uh, yesterday, and uh, he, he really liked it. And I'm sure he's listening uh, today because he said he was going to come in. But do you want, you want to go ahead and tell us the story behind this? I remember meeting Jim Sloman, and well, I've known Wells Wilder for a long time, and I remember meeting uh, Sloman. Wells Wilder said he's the smartest human being that he ever met. But why don't you go ahead and take over? We've got a good 15 minutes, so go right ahead, Bill. Look, you've got the uh, first chart set up there. I did a, I tried to replicate as closely as I could what Tom had put out there uh, yesterday, yesterday morning with his charts. And I added some specific details because what Tom was, and Tom, you know, it's quite incredible that he saw this. He's very astute in his uh, market observations and his market thinking. But what he picked up on was one of the fun fundamental pieces of the Delta phenomenon, which was discovered by Jim Sloman and uh, marketed by Wells Wilder. But what Tom had found was basically there's a hidden order in all markets. And if you notice what... Tom was talking about there's 500 days and 72 weeks. Well, if you break that down, it's actually 504 days divided by 28 days per lunar month, which is 18 months. And if 18 months and four weeks, there's your 72 weeks. Mm -hmm. Wow. And if you look at where I had indicated, I put the one, two, three, four, the, the vertical arrows in that Tom had put in yesterday and his turning points. Mm -hmm. But you can see where they all start. His number one starts with the number one just before the red line. Mm -hmm. His number four starts at the number one just before the red line mm -hmm. and ends at just about point six, or number two, on his first line there, and which is in 72 weeks. But what the thing about the Delta phenomena is, is that it's the premise is that markets repeat. 
directly or inversely relative to the total interaction of the sun, the moon, and the earth. So what you're seeing is on a weekly basis, and this is, this is, these are, are, this is an annual chart that you're looking at. Every year, it has a different color code. So you have a red year, a blue year, a yellow year, a green year, and then it repeats. Because the sun and the moon and the earth, it's four rotations of the earth around the sun, four rotations of the moon around the earth. And that's basically the breakdown of this concept. And what Tom was able to also see was that markets will repeat directly or inversely every four lunar months. So if you go to chart number two. Okay, give me one second. I have to get that up, Bill. It'll only take me a second here to get it. And uh, let's see. <laughs> Uh, just a second here. There we go. I, I, what I have to do is I have to get back into the Tiger Den and put this up here to look at it. Uh, uh, we have a question from one of our listeners. Uh, uh, did you ever meet Chris Carolyn? I have never had the pleasure. Because uh, he does some really fabulous work in this in this area also. This so, mm -hmm. yeah, go right ahead. There's chart two. So in chart two, you can see where... Uh, Tom picked up on the 22 to 2011, and the one thing he was saying, he doesn't know why this breaks down, you know, some, because sometimes it just seems to disappear. Well, what happens is that it compresses, mm -hmm. so you're not getting these dramatic shifts that you would no normally get. The 72-week period or the 504 days, it's, it's in there. You just have to do the count. Now, we have another question, Bill. Do you do any Elliott wave analysis along with these uh, with these numbers that you have here? I have a, you know, I've, I'm not a really big fan of Elliott wave. I, I've never been able to quite to make it work. And I find that people who, I've just never been able to, to, you know, it, it goes beyond my 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 way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So I'm not. I don't. I don't do the Elliott wave. Okay. But I I do uh, basically a delta count. So uh, what you have in chart two is where you had the final break in 2011 down to. You can see from 0.7 to 0.8, and that being 72, uh, 72 weeks, 504 days. Now, the thing in Delta is that it's not exact. It can be 67 weeks. It can be 72 weeks. It can be 76 weeks. Mm -hmm. What do you do to make up for the difference? Esti estimable. You see. Okay. Okay, one of the questions that we're getting from the den here is, uh, what do you do if it's if you go to 72 weeks and it stretches out to 76? Do you stay long or short during those two weeks, or how do you handle that? You stay long, but quite naturally, you're also going to have your secondary indicators that okay. you're following. You're going to have your your, uh, your moving averages. You're going to have your Fibonacci levels. Okay. And those are the decision-making pieces. What you basically have here with, with the Delta is a roadmap to what the market should look like during the year. Mm -hmm. Now, I forecast okay. out two years in advance with the Delta. And you can ask mm -hmm. any of my clients, I come pretty damn close to wow. uh, what actually occurs out there in the marketplace. Okay. The, well, that's you know that's that's interesting. The secondary indicators are what's really leading you through this uh -huh. marketplace, and it's unfortunate. You know, we get a lot of people get an us versus them mentality 
when it comes to the market, you know, the market's against me. It's not. The market is telling you exactly what's going to happen. And so many people, have, you know, I, I see on so many different sites all these gurus out there who just base their analysis on price as opposed to looking at the secondary indicators, the breadth indicators, the, the, the spread between the cash and the futures, the premiums, uh -huh. the tick, the ticky, the trim. They're all telling you where this market is headed. Yeah. Hey, Bill, we've got, got a, a commercial. We've got, yeah, yeah, we have a commercial. We'll have you on again soon. Thanks for joining us. We put your information there, so if people want to reach you, Trend Reaction. Bill Chapman, thank you so much for joining us today, my friend. No problem. Good talking to you, Larry. Bet. Take care. Good talking to you, Bill. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have uh, Shane Smolian on the line. Shane, are you there? Good morning, Larry. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I don't see your charts. I hope you have them at TFNN because I have, uh, I, I don't see them. So uh, you want to just go ahead and we'll, we'll work through it no matter what. Can we, so, can we see uh, the charts now? I just, I just shared the screen. We should be able to see it. Okay. I hope the folks can see it. So why don't you go ahead and, and yeah, there we go. We're in business. Why don't you start out and, um, you know, you've got a lot to tell us. So just go right ahead, my friend. Sure. So I, I would like to look at this as like an ongoing process because every time we talk we talk about something a little bit different and I've been talking a lot about the Fed and 
the Fed juice, and, and people are interested in that, and, and it is a very interesting topic. But uh, the Fed is really just one tool. The Fed juice is just one tool. So I want to talk a little bit today about the solar cycles and you know how we, where they come from, how we can use them, and uh, and then I want to talk about gold and how that relates to gold, and we'll kind of make our way over to the S and P towards the end. Uh, but in essence here, this is a chart that I had up last time where we talked about combining the, cycle, the tape and the cycle to gain an advantage. And again, if you look at a chart like this, it just looks like a bunch of arrows. It looks like a bunch of confusing information. It may look like gibberish, you know, like it's a dartboard. How do we make any sense of this? Well, again, the, the way that we make sense of this is that we assign values to things and we, we look at um, – the tape, which is the Fed juice here, as our primary indicator, and then we want to see the other indicators line up with that. Uh, and so that's when we get our big moves. So when you see here, the red line here is the Fed juice, and then the solar cycle is the blue, and the planetary speed index is black. And now you can see when these, these align up that we can get these moves to the downside. Uh, and then, of course, to the upside, I'm, a, I'm really only looking for agreement with uh, the one of these with the, the Fed juice here. So these are very important. They're equally balanced. In case of in the case of the S&P, I give a dominant feature here to the to the Fed juice. And once those are lined up, then you can get your upside moves. When you see these lined up with the red line with the blue arrows or or the black arrows here. So that was just kind of a recap on what we talked about last time. But now let's talk about let's talk about a solar cycle. So what is it? So people talk about solar cycles all the time. And it's just kind of thrown out there, and people say, well, here's the solar cycle. Well, the solar cycle is a correlation of how a stock or future moves in relation to the degree of the sun. Uh, the sun moves one degree per day with no retrograde motion. So this is really important because a lot of these other planets will move back and forth in Mercury, and you know, particularly Mercury because we were, we're so close to it, we deal with it. But all these planets have a retrograde motion uh, other than the moon because of where we are in the universe. But the reason I like the solar cycle is because the same date each year will have the same placement in the cycle. So, for example, if we run a solar cycle and I want to know what is the movement on February 19, 2020 today, and I look past years, it's exactly the same. It's a mirror, which is good. So this is favorable because it lines up with annual seasonals of a company or a commodity. So, for example, in the winter – we might see natural gas demand typically rise, although this year it hasn't, but typically it rises. And so the solar cycle will show us that. And so it has a lot of inherent power built into it, more so than other cycles, more so than if I say a 28-day cycle, which is a lunar cycle or, or whatever it is. This one is really good. And when you look into the Stock Traders Almanac and you go to the book, your local bookstore and you say on this day, the S&P has a 61% chance of rising and – you know, and so on and so on. That's based on the solar cycle. And so it's very powerful for that reason. So I really like it as a go-to. Even if another cycle might optimize better, I really like this one because it's something that everybody can relate to. So the solar cycle. So how can we trust it? So we see cycles and guests come on the show and they say, well, here's this cycle going out to here. And, and that's great. But the past may or may not predict the future with cycles. And so we need to be very careful about this. Just because something followed the markets in the past does not mean does not mean that it will predict it in the future. It might, but it does not mean. So one of the things that we try to do is we try to get an ideal number of cycles. And more is not necessarily better, by the way. If just because we're going back to 1885, it doesn't make the cycle better. Uh, particularly when we're dealing with the S&P, because the S&P from 2009 to now is a completely different market with the Fed than from before 2009. So if we take the S&P and we're going back before 2009, we are essentially mixing pre-Fed data with post-Fed data. So this is something to be careful about, too. Um, so there's two sample portions that we look at. So if we want to trust something, we want to make sure that the past, which is the in-sample portion, produced futures, results in the future. And so we need to test this. So there's two ways we can test it. We can test it qualitatively, which is visually, or ideally quantitatively. And that gets into walk-forward analysis and all these things. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show an example here of gold. So this is a chart of gold. This is a solar cycle. 
And so what I'm going to show the, the viewers here, the difference here, this portion on the left, which is yellow, and I always color my charts. So gold is a yellow chart. So it's easy to identify. This is what we call the in sample portion. This is the past. And you can see down here, <clears throat> excuse me, the price is up here on gold. And down here, this is the solar cycle. So you can see that um, these peaks and troughs were mirrored very closely to this solar cycle. You see this peak into here, how it matched that peak into there. And this trough into here matched this trough into here and so on. And and it, it did a pretty good job of modeling these on, on a broad basis, these peaks and troughs. Now, one of the dangers of cycles is that they're, they're oscillators. So when we have trending markets, it needs to be taken into with the context of that. And of course, you can see down here, it missed it completely. It said this was a top and it was, it was a bottom. But for the most part, it, it is modeling it in the past. And that's great. And when we look in the past, it should match the market because we have all of the data to curve fit, right? That's a curve fit. So we can call that a curve fit. But how do we know to trust it? Well, this portion here on the right side, which I'm going to draw in pink, this is out of sample. In other words, I took this data and I stopped it in 2019. And so it doesn't see any of this data into the future here. This is all the future. In other words, if, like if we went to a time machine and I went back to 2019 and I stopped it right there and we let this go for a year on its own, this is what would have happened. So this is the out of sample portion and you can see here that it's still mirroring these peaks and troughs. You see right here how it mirrors this? It still does wow. a pretty good job. Pretty good of, job. It's darn near perfect. Yeah, and, and this is a good one. Gold is a good one. Now, they're not all like this. So... This is one of the dangers. You have to qualitatively look at these cycles because some of them will not keep going forward. But gold is a particularly good one. And you can see here in early 2020, it picked up that low. Now, again, this is in the context of a, a bull, right, of a, of a rallying gold market. So this oscillator is not going to tell you that we're making higher highs and higher lows, obviously. But what I care about, if I'm trying to produce a, a, a curve for customers, okay, I want to make sure that the past matches the future. And that means that the, oh. the, the amount of samples that I took in the, the look back period, in other words, the amount of time from the past was appropriate uh -huh. to predict the future. And so hey, that's hey, we got we got to take a break here, pal. Please stay with us. This is about the most interesting thing. Uh, I just love this. We'll be right back, folks. Shane Smolian will be back with uh, Wolf Trader and more on the solar cycles. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What should you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we have Shane Smoyan on the line talking about the solar cycles and gold. You want to continue, Shane? Sure. So, again, the one, the one thing I just want to emphasize here is that just because... A, a solar cycle matched the market perfectly in the past. It has nothing to do with the future. And so we have to test and see how it did in the future over and over to get, in, to get an idea, a degree of confidence on this. And that's the whole point of this. So you can see gold here is actually rolling up to a top right now. It's actually at a top on the solar cycle. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into the next slide, which is actually up to date. Now, if you look down at the bottom, you can see you see how that box moves from the left to the right. Can you see that? How the yellow box moves? Yes, sure can. To the right. Now, notice, n look at those solar cycles at the bottom. You see how they changed just a little bit, but they really didn't change that much. They changed a little bit, but more or less, they kept their structure intact. And that's that's for a full year. That's that's in other words, if I just did this and let it go for a year, that's what it would be for a year. So I think the gold on the solar cycle is definitely at. We're at some type of a of a top right now on this gold. Now, keep in mind, we're in the context of a bull, okay, in the long term. But I'm going to go over to to my charts now on on gold. When I look at this, I look at gold uh, with the tape. So we can see here that we have our uh, solar cycle has, is just peaking now on this gold. Now, my tape is down here. The tape is what I follow on this. This is this is also optimized. This is a MACD. I optimize them. So it's a simple indicator, but it's optimized. But notice that it's not taking the bait on any of this rally. You see how this is staying mm -hmm. in a cell the whole time down here? It's not taking the bait. And, and what that means is that it's telling me that, okay, well, the tape is down still, according to this, which is an optimized indicator, and my solar cycle's at a high. So I I think gold could have a could have a run down here. I mean we have to see what happens with this tape, but you can see here that this this uh, MACD indicator here that I've optimized is still running down on gold. And now that solar cycle came into that high. So even though it looks like a breakout here, um, I think we got to watch it closely because I, I don't see it yet as a breakout. I don't see it. And and, it, and we have a run down here until about March the 10th on the solar cycle. That's the next turn. And uh, we also look at other things here too. We look at uh, Bollinger Band widths, the Bollinger Band width tends to get very narrow at the beginning of a run. You can see down here. So this is the Bollinger Band width down here. When it gets very narrow, you can see that's right before a run starts. And when it gets up to the top, that's when the run ends. So gold is starting to increase now on its Bollinger Band width. And a lot of times when it starts to increase in volatility, it can get it can get very wavy before it makes its final move. So we have to watch this closely. But that's just an example of the solar cycle and putting the solar cycle in alignment with with this. So real quick, I'm going to go over to the S&P here because I know we're, we're kind of short on time. Uh, but um, in essence here, this market is very strong. And oh, I wanted to talk about this, actually. I'm going to show you a weekly chart here. Uh, this this is important. And I haven't talked about this on your show yet. Uh, but I have this S&P. I price it in terms of the Fed juice. So when you price it in terms of the Fed juice, you can actually see these cycle lows much cleaner. If you look at it by price, you can't really see it. So I have this S&P. I actually have it at a historic low. So in other words, it's, it looks inverted. It looks like we're at a top here. But on January the 10th, 2020, it made a historic low here. And when that tends to happen, I've looked at this in the past when I've priced the S&P in terms of the Fed juice. 
the market tends to run for two to three years. It tends to have these big runs. And so we're at one of these historic lows right now. Now you can't see it on the chart. It looks like we're at these highs. It looks like we're at peaks. But in essence, since 2009, the market does tend to follow these, these Fed lows. Or in other words, this model is very good at predicting on a weekly time frame the S&P. And so I, I always I, I say here that we're diesel strong. I mean, I don't see any. You can see the Fed juice here climbing, uh, and we're at this historic low. So probably, if if this model is an, if the past of this model is an indication of the future, then we have a two to three year rally coming, and we're coming into lows right now. And again, you need to put on your 3D goggles to see this. Okay, so you can't see this just by looking at the chart. You got to take the Fed juice into consideration. But if you put on your 3D Fed goggles, you can see that we're coming into a historic low here. We're just coming off of it, and so Shane, I think we're going to we, have. We've yes, got, we've got a question. Uh, where do you buy the 3D goggles again? <laughs> WolfTraderFutures.com. <laughs> go ahead, my friend. Yeah, you can go. You can go on to WolfTraderFutures.com, and I put. You, I have a. Uh, member content there and we have our service our twitter and then our our monthly newsletter there but uh this this kind of stuff is uh is, imp is important to pay attention to because it tends to keep repeating itself i can go back many times to these historic lows on the weekly time frame and the market tends to rally so uh it's just a model but i think it's a good one it's a darn good model and uh if you if you look at the market in terms of the fed it will make sense uh and that that's what i'm looking at here and um I know it may be hard for some people to believe that the Fed is controlling this or the central banks, but really just try to look at these models, look at the data and, and kind of try to forget, you know, maybe where this comes. Like if you're not into the astrology, well, this, look at the solar cycle. Look how good it modeled. OK, that's an annual cycle. Look at look at how good the Fed models it. Uh, and, and right here, uh, you can see the Fed juice on the daily time frame did just very briefly go into a sell here, and now it's projected to come right back up into a buy. And I said that on Friday. On Friday, I said, well, this thing barely has any room to move down here, even though it wasn't a sell. Uh, so this is where why you have to combine the tape here with, with these uh, planetary speed index and the solar cycle, because if you don't do that, you can really get into trouble. And, and, and if you looked at the planetary speed index alone, you would say, oh, we're in for this big decline. But really, if you look at how strong the market is, it's in the context of that bull run. So you, you, gotta, you have to look at everything together and in context. And when you do that, you can start to get a little bit of a better, a little, little more clear picture of what's going on. Mm -hmm. one, one question that one of our listeners is uh, asking is, will there be a time sometime in the future where the Fed says, you know, we're done playing with this thing and we're going to let the market do its own thing? Do you think that'll ever happen? That's what the question is. Do I think that will ever happen? Me, my personal feeling, no. I, I think we're in a new phase okay. of global markets okay. since 2009. But okay. um, you know, I, we don't know the future. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. And we don't know mm -hmm. if at some point the market will stop responding. So that's the answer. I, I personally don't think they're going to stop. But what if what if it stops responding to the Fed? You know, and I think I would pick that up. I would pick that up if that happened. But right now, no, it's mm -hmm. it's it, the Fed is working in tandem with with markets. And it's I think it's a new phase going forward that the banks are going to be actively involved going forward. OK. Keep going, my friend. OK. So we've got uh, another and, and minute or two, and then we're going to have a break, sure. and then we'll have you on at the end. So keep keep going. This is really interesting. Keep so it up. Is, so again, so uh, when I'm looking for a short, and I, I talked about that on that PowerPoint presentation, I'm looking for all three of these indicators to be down. So like in this situation over here on the 15th, when the Fed juice went into a cell. Uh, you had the solar cycle here down, and the planetary speed index down, and then you, you can get a decline. But right here. Again, we, we still had that solar cycle up, so I wasn't interested in taking a short here. And probably it's going to go right back into that buy today on this market. So uh, that's, that's, that's essentially it in terms of the S&P. I mean, I just see it as very strong going forward. And um, real quick, I want to look at that natural gas uh, because I really like this one. Now, notice this natural gas. I'm shifting gears here, I know. But this natural gas, uh, you can see here aligned beautifully with this Bollinger Band width. You can see that this Bollinger Band width got very narrow down here, and mm -hmm. that usually signals that a, 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 the volatility is at a low, it's about to start expanding. And right here, we got our alignment here with our, yeah. our tape. Yeah. We got the alignment with the solar cycle right here. And you can see it's starting to move off beautifully Good. off that low. Okay, stay with us. we got the end of the show coming up, and you'll be right back with us. Shane Smolian, wolftrader.net. 
877-927-6648. Call in, folks, before the lines get too You are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, with Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.net. Go ahead, my friend. Okay, I just wanted to close off here by showing a more of a zoomed-in picture here. This is a daily view of the Fed juice versus the market. And you can see here that the market is just running beautifully with it at point A here. It was at a peak. Point B, the Fed juice was dropping. The market drops. Point C, the Fed juice rises. The market rises. Point D, the Fed juice falls. The market falls. Point E, the Fed juice goes up. The market goes up. Uh, if you look here, look at this recent wiggles here in the market. You see the Fed juice start tapering off here. Then the market falls off here. You can see the Fed juice here, bottoming here going up the market goes up and then we had that little hook back here and the market hook back there so I think this market is still responding very well to the Fed so to answer the the question of your caller I I don't I don't see an end to this anytime soon and the mm -hmm. market is is beautifully responding to this so mm -hmm. that's fabulous listen tell the folks how they can reach you my friend sure if you want to reach me you can go to wolftraderfutures.com and you can set up a free member account. There's also an online chat there. You can chat with me or you can fill out a form and ask me questions. Uh, and then the the Twitter is at WolfTraderFUTU1. That's the free Twitter. So you can go there and sign up. That one's absolutely free. And I, I post there some sample free charts. And I post you know, when I'm going to have media appearances, et cetera. And when you go to the chart up there on the top right, there's a log. And that's where you can create your free account if you want to go there and do that. And we offer two packages. We offer the gold member package, which is the Twitter service, which is 10 different markets we follow 
following the same uh, concepts, the cycles and the tape. Also, uh, we get this live Twitter feed all day, and you get the newsletter. Or we just have a newsletter, which is just the S&P, once a month, uh, $39.99. And then I'll do a video about once a week updating the market on that. So the gold member package is really the one that has the live updates daily on the Fed, though. If you want to get that, that is $225 a month. And that's, I mean, I'm just, without fail, those charts come out every day. So you'll, you'll see those charts popping up on your Twitter every single day if you, get, if you sign up for that service. Well, listen, thanks for joining us. We'll have you on again soon. And uh, stay safe down there, down in Florida. And it's really a, a pleasure to have you on with this great information. So thank you so much, Shane. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, thanks everybody. Okay. Have a great day.